Hello, Pivots of the Internet, and welcome to this video where I will be attempting to build a rival to the 1990 Honda NSX. Now, I could base it on the 1945 Coupe, but that is too old and too American for the purpose I've got in mind. The 1975 Porsche is getting on a bit, and the drag is quite high, but again, not the worst choice. A 1985 convertible could be a good choice, remember, though. We are talking front engined here if we're looking for mid engined it narrows it down to just these three vehicles rear engined we can get the porsche and the 1950s car which actually could be a viable option but i still think it's a little too old although remember if we're talking like the mini it could just be like a later version of a mini that's however if we're talking more arrival for I don't know, the Tortoise Turbo I built a while ago, as opposed to a rival for the Honda NSX. Now, we have these two, basically, I think, are our choices. They are, I think, a Honda NSX body, even, but what we do with that will change things. Now, this one has quite a bit of front-end downforce, I would say, but it's less lift as opposed to positive downforce and that does increase a drag so as a result I'll go with this one another reason if you have loads of front downforce it could cause the car to have a bit too much front end grip and spin out at high speed and I definitely don't want that I'd rather just have it lift the front off the ground it's a much safer option now the chassis Oh, the panel material here. Sorry, my brain's being funny. I'm thinking I'll go with fiberglass. It's just very me. I built my past three vehicle models with fiberglass. So, I, actually, the last one I did change to aluminium for weight balance reasons. But I'm going to keep it fiberglass for now. And the NSX was aluminium. So, that'll change it. It'll depend if it's really heavy. I might change it back to aluminium. If it's really light, I may keep it on fiberglass. If it's somewhere in the middle, it's hard to really say. Cost, I guess. But I'll come back to this stuff. We'll go with a corrosion-resistant steel chassis to keep that corrosion out. Should be pretty good at avoiding corrosion, though, with this setup. Corrosion-resistant steel and fiberglass. I mean, it should do a very good job of deterring the rust. Now we can go with mid-longitudinal or mid transverse i believe the nsx is transverse so that's the way we'll go and for suspension well we could go push rod that's more ferrari f50 though can't seem to see it on the front has that gone a bit funny i don't know maybe it's a different system it kind of just stuck a rear push rod on the front before and oh dear that was a seizure alert if i ever saw one and we'll go with i think double wishbone it seems like it moves the wheels inwards as well. It definitely moves them upwards, which is interesting. Maybe the wishbone has less suspension travel. As for quality, I'll go plus one, I think, on everything. Should be a good compromise overall. We have to select this body, of course, or it wouldn't be our special supercar. Yeah, it just got so much longer there. It's quite nice looking, although I feel the paint could do with some work. Namely, we make it blue. And I'm thinking, actually, if I do this properly, ooh, maybe we can have a two-tone. But I was thinking, if we do this properly, I could perhaps turn this into a premium luxury kind of thing. So, chrome window trim. Although it doesn't feel fitting at all on a car like this. So, I could just have it blue. Oh, I could have it carbon fibre, actually. Uh, carbon fibre would have been extremely expensive, though, back in the day, and extremely limited production, so it's not a realistic option to put on what is essentially a high-performance sports car. Everyone calls these supercars because they were expensive, though, so I think we'll justify the cost a little by having the carbon fibre here. But I still don't think of these as supercars because they were just very high performance, very expensive sports cars to me. Chrome mirrors, perhaps? No, I think we'll go with carbon fibre again, just... Or we'll change that back to blue because it works better. As for the wheels, 
I feel Crow might be a little too much for it. Carbon Fiber is a little too gangster for this kind of vehicle. Could have Red. Red works oddly well, actually. If I have Red Mirrors, maybe that could look good. Or I've got a better idea, even. If I can somehow get White. Where has it gone? So that's the blue. I did go a new custom colour. So this can be called my whatever. Oh, it, there it is. This can be called C to D white, as it is going to be white. Pillar. Was it this? Ooh. Not what I was going for, but it kind of works. I think that should be black to kind of blend. Although a part of me does think white as well. If I can get it to match up the window trim, which I've just found, thankfully. Yeah, I don't know about the window trim. If only I could get it on just a way behind that pillar, that would look pretty good. But unfortunately, I can't. So, carbon fibre it is. Looks like the best option. That white part is growing on me though. So I think I'll leave it for now. Maybe change it later. And that is flickering pretty nastily. Maybe it's just all the reflections going on under there. And my wheels don't seem to be white colour. Oh dear. Is that Core 2 Duo white? It's all the, It kind of goes chrome when you really push to the sides. But it's white from... 90% of angles. Maybe we need to take the shine off. Make it work that way. Yeah, it's still got that bit of shine to it for some reason, but it is mostly white now. Exhaust tip. We can add an exhaust tip. Okay, we'll do that. Can we duplicate them? I don't know. Just finish up the design of this quickly, I says, before it gets too late. Put a fuel cap on and various other bits that we need. We need a grill somewhere on the way because that's where all the cooling happens. Ooh, I think this could look good. Excellent. Beautiful design, yes. I don't think you can mess with the arrow, unfortunately. Although we can possibly change the design. Don't want to bring that forward, it doesn't look good. Could bring that forward, but it wouldn't look good either. Ooh, can bring the door back. Ooh, look at this. Can bring that all the way back there. That'd be a very unconventional way of doing things. Leave it at that, I think. There's just a fine balance between good looking and just messy. A very fine balance indeed. This is just messy now. <laughs> I've ruined it. I've ruined it, I've let everyone down. And what was I doing with the design? Adding door handles, of course. Well, that's not actually what I was doing, but it makes me look more mature. If I'm actually doing something with my time. Number plate. You're tiny, you need to be made bigger. Front number plate too, we can have. Fill some space. <laughs> I think that's bigger than we're close enough. Who's going to notice? A lot of people actually, but not me. <laughs> yeah, design it like the Fiat Multipler. Everyone suffers as long as they're not inside it. Then you actually quite enjoy the experience. What do we have to put on the front? Headlights, yes. I've come up with a very evil plan to know how to design this which isn't that evil but it works 
Yes. You can be done. I need to get off there somehow. So I can put other lights on. No, stay in the centre. That's the point. You're a centre air wheel. Headlights again. Oh, actually, no, indicators. Making it up as I go along. Look at this beauty. Ha <laughs> ha. You don't see cars this beautiful often. Exaggeration, perhaps. Then we can have some lower headlights. Ones that actually work. That actually light up the road. Maybe some vents on the front. Like these ones. Which have wedding, which is strange. If only I could paint that white. That would just be so good looking in my head. It's so horrible looking to everyone else. Can we have badges? Doesn't look like it. Now we need some tail lights though. Yeah, let's just slap some cheapo tail lights on. Pour the effort into the front and then just forget about the way completely. It looks like something out of Simpsons Hit and One. Like, one of the cars you don't generally drive, just a traffic vehicle. It's that poor, but it's just got the same graphical level as a early 2000s video game. Yes, I can speak. I feel like I'm grabbing the wrong parts of the car though, moving them around. Now, we need to hopefully get a engine that's not too mad in a bad way. Oh yes, I've had an idea. I'm sorry Honda fans, <laughs> I'm going to do something even higher revving and even madder than the NSX engine. A turbocharged 5 valve per cylinder inline 3. Hey, if a Mitsubishi key car can have a 5 valve per cylinder inline 3, then this can. It was actually a 1989 car there, and it had 5 valve per cylinder. Pretty impressive for the day. Especially when we're talking about a tiny city car that it was incorporated into. Okay, due to size constraints and the amount of power I could get for each engine size and everything, I've ended up with a 2.4 litre, exactly actually, inline 4 engine with 5 valve per cylinder and a little turbocharger there, as you'll see. And we've got quite a big radiator for it. This stuff will make sense a little later, hopefully. It's full aluminium, which is good for weight. Speaking of which, I will show you in a moment. Don't want to ruin the surprise of the power as of yet. We've got um, billet steel crank, I-beam steel conrods and forged pistons. Really the best I could get for high-performance engines. There is hyper however you say that, but... It's more an economy technology, thus it's not good on high revving engines like this. I say high revving, it's not that high revving, but it's high revving enough to drive those kind of flimsy pistons mad. Compression is pretty low, cam profile pretty high, and we do have VVT on the intake. Turbo size is pretty small for compressor and turbine, I've got quite a high AR ratio, and I've got 15.2... PSI quite a bit as you'll see here is our power curve power comes in just before 3000 rpm So not great, but it could be worse at the same time It does come along early enough I think to give us a good usable power curve and by the time things start fading you're at 7500 rpm and It's time to shift anyway, so all in all, that could be worse. Weight is very impressive at 166.4, at least compared to the NSX, where it's over 200 kilograms. That will have obvious advantages. And, as I say, I think the turbo lag shouldn't be too disruptive. It's just never going to be as refined as a naturally aspirated V6, because it's a turbocharged four-cylinder engine. And they are just not simply luxury engines. They are just... Simple simple engines for performance and economy and overall solid performance, but not for luxury, sporty feel. I'm messing with the RPM again. It's 7500 is what it's happy at. Piston stress, there is some. 
but not enough to really concern me, so I'm going to be relatively happy with that. I did actually run out of space, believe it or not. This is a very tight engine bay to work with, probably why Honda went with a V6. This is just a different way of doing it. It's a much smaller engine, but it's still quite large for an inline four. If I do that, though, you'll see it doesn't fit in the car. So I've had to be quite choosy. It won't even fit. Well, it won't work properly if I do that to it. So I've decided to leave that at 2.4 litres because it's a good balance between the engine blowing up from stress on the piston and valve flow and generally fitting it in the car. Now I will run the engine so you can hear it. I've also attempted to choose some mufflers that kind of make it sound good but I've not done a good job of it. There's just loads of turbo sound and not much else. Anyway without further ado So not the smoothest power and torque curve in the world, especially not when the turbo kicks in, but it does have, I think, fairly stable performance. Going back to here, we'll see I have got a slightly lower cam profile. Maybe I could get more power from that, although no, I'm just messing it up now. Yeah, it did seem to just naturally drop to 87, to be fair on it, but I like having it slightly lower because it generally gives me a more strong power curve it's not drooping down like some engines do drop down loads this is good this is a solid upwards curve constantly so you do get good performance out of the engine is what i'm basically saying i've got no wing as of yet or no cooling i should probably put something on i say no cooling i've got those vents not enough <laughs> yeah, and that one, but it's on the front, who knows? It's worth trying and seeing how it goes, and I do not like that flickering one bit. Now, we can go with a 5-speed manual for the transmission. Speed, I'm not sure, I'll just say at 155-ish for now. And we'll go with a geared limited slip differential. Quality can be on plus one. No power distribution because it's rear-wheel drive there as it's selected. Text block, no, we want tyres, not text block. Oh dear, 215s. I think 235 might do the job. So if we can squeeze 235 in here somehow. Yep, there we go. Can we make the wheels themselves bigger though, I wonder? Oh dear. It's just sometimes complicated with how it affects these things. I don't want to flare those arches too massively though, it's already kind of a wide body. So what can one do about this? Yet yeah, 16 inches it takes. 17 inches it takes. It's when they get to 18 inches, that's when things start going wrong. But 17 inches looks quite good. Can have 205s on the front as well. Hmm, do I want wider front tyres? I don't know. I think I want maybe a wider front track. No, I'll just leave it at that then. I could perhaps go with 195s on the front. But I think I'm happy with 205s. Although, if I could go with 245s on the rear, I wouldn't complain about that. Just edge this arch outwards. As I say, I don't like making it wider when it's already so wide. Maybe it won't go any wider. That, maybe that's what's going on here. Maybe it just won't go any wider than 235s, regardless of how wide I make that. The wheel arch is slightly restricting the movement, which is something to be said. Come on, I want I want 235s. There we go. I am concerned that's not wide enough, but without making it a rocket bunny, what am I going to do? Now, we can go with alloy wheels. Seem pretty relevant for the time. These wheels don't look too bad at 17 inches. 
could look a lot worse on the car, which is a combination of a Volkswagen Beetle and an NSX now. New Beetle, that is not the older model. We have various brake options. I think we'll go with three piston vented discs on the front. Maybe. I'm feeling luxury here. And we can go with some much more standard, although still pretty high performance. Where's oh no, don't want to mess with brake bias. We can go with some more performance bias, but not really high end brakes on the way at about 275 millimeters. That's a good start, I think. If we can get the car to brake and slow well, we should be onto a good thing here. Now, I think we'll go slightly more track bias, put them on 60. Because we've put a lot of technology into them, so it wouldn't hurt to do that. I only see one pad type, though. Maybe it just applies to both of them now. That's interesting. Fully clad under tray, keep this thing aerodynamic. I'm going to find this beats my Lamborghini Diablo rival or something. Wouldn't that be annoying? Mind, it's got nowhere near as much power, so I'm not actually too scared for that. But it may be surprisingly quick. Who knows for certain? Now, we've got cooling. How much do we need? Ah, we've got plenty. I wouldn't think so, but apparently we've got plenty. Now, we can attribute some of that to the brakes. And then... Is attribute the right word? Probably not. No, I don't know how much brake and cooling I'm sending to the car. There we go. It was just hiding the menu from me. What's that all about? And I just got hair in my eye. <laughs> the painful moment that we all suffer. And what interior can we go with? I know the NSX uses something fairly standard. Uh, so maybe premium should do the trick. Again, we're talking high-end sports car here. It's not really a supercar if you ask me. We'll go with higher quality though, still expect a certain level of fit and finish. And we'll go with a premium cassette. Should we go with a fancy steering? I don't think we need it, I think it adds weight, I don't think we really need it that much. Although, maybe we could. Hmm, nah, I'll just go with hydraulic. Well, we shouldn't need traction aids as long as this thing is gripping, as I expect it to grip. We'll go with advanced safety, help keep my car safe, hydro pneumatic suspension set up for comfort, hopefully making it more comfortable everyday car, but also good round the track. I don't have to go as mad as I did with a Diablo rival because we're not just after war lap times here, <laughs> like I were at one point with that car. And how is it done? Have I missed something crucial? Probably. Um, I've set that suspension up. Hmm, what else do we have to go with? Ah, tyres. I missed the tyres out. I think we'll go with sports compound. They're not very wide, so that should somewhat compensate for the extra money you spend on the tyre compound itself. And... Comfort again. I keep setting up the suspension. I put too much effort into that. It is incredibly, incredibly light. 11.19 kilograms. Very, very good there. Brake fade is not too bad. And where's the weight balance? Oh, that does not look good. We are looking at fiberglass panels. I'm thinking I'll change that to aluminium. Weight is not an issue by any means. Weight balance, however, 62% weight, as that digit there is flawed. Yep. I want a little more weight frontwards than that because that is very weird heavy. If I was trying to build a Porsche rival, I would want a lot of weight over the back. In this particular case, not so much. Also, I do want it to have that aluminium construction above all else. Quality, yep. We'll also go through the quality while we're on these menus, if we can. No, looked like it was just that one menu. Now, how is it? It's still not looking good. Still giving me the same numbers. Maybe it needs a refresh. 
No, 62% we're still, it says. I don't know what that's all about. I did just change the material, didn't I? Chassis material is corrosion resistant steel. Panel material is aluminium. I know it doesn't make a huge difference, but still. And this is all to think I've got a lighter engine in the back as well. This is lighter than what's in the NSX, despite being a turbo. So, I don't know what's going on with this. I don't know why it's thinking of it the way it is. Now, I could try partial aluminium. See if that works. That's a heavier, older technology. Yes, that does move weight forwards. But at what cost? We're now putting on about 100 kilograms from its oldie days of fiberglass. And that is not something we want to happen. I think I'm happy with aluminium though. It's light enough, it's a good enough compromise. And as much as I don't like how weird bias it is, if a Porsche or a Wolf can deal with having that much weight at the back, I see no reason this shouldn't. Honestly. And, you know... It's the way things are. <laughs> I can't change it. It's just come out this way. But anyway, I've got to take it around the test track on a uh, suspension, which I'm obsessively changing now. So I'll return when I have done that. Okay, so here we have our final finished vehicle. I did make a few changes along the way. The basic vehicle is the same, though. Now the lap time, which I've just sent away is a 2 minutes 15.26 which puts it above the speed room above RS and below the polluter advance and the wet room above the 8 injection turbo as it is and below the aero me bob but both of those vehicles are from a similar kind of era but designed with a much higher end market in mind Hence why I'm not too displeased with this. And what's happened there? Oh dear! Oh dear, my wheels have gone funny. Yeah, the entire game has just given up. Like, I hate your car, okay? I'm going to ruin it for you. <laughs> Is there some semblance of an engine in there? Ugh, it's a flickery seizure mess, though. I would not want to be in that engine bay. I'd be seizing up left, right and centre in there. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, the mods per gallon, you'll see, has improved. That is to do with the vehicle getting slightly lighter. I'll get to it round here. It's got a carbon fibre chassis and fibreglass panels. I decided I was going to do that because I made the internals actually pr more premium, as in the interior and the fit and finish and things. I seem to have missed it out, actually, but I had plus three on quality on everything other than the engine, which was plus five on everything. And it sounds like a lot, and it is a lot. To, it adds a lot of money to this car, but it isn't entirely without reason. Because, as I say, it has made it lighter, and we had so much money to play with. As I am told, the NSX in its day was 60,000. This, it's mainly, I think, the carbon fibre chassis which does that. But it puts us right in line with it for the cost. The engine as well, it's slightly more powerful. I say slightly, it's about 40 horsepower. 320 horsepower now. Not bad by any means. Say 40, it's probably more like 30 horsepower. Sound is about the same. There's other small changes, like the red line is higher, but I have got 5 plus on quality, so that kind of hides the piston stress, although the stress is there. There's not much I can say to it. Thankfully, by 7600, you're probably going to shift in terms of general road usage. It's only on track usage you'll be exceeding that. So, all in all, I'm happy. I've also made another crucial change to push rod suspension, which now this vehicle's somewhat recovered. It allows me to have the tyre widths I want. Also now wider 275 rear 235 fronts. It allows me to have those, but to 
also not have to go with a crazy wide body to achieve it. The intake is very, very squeezed though. If you can just peek in on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see it's very, very tightly squeezed. And have I just messed up my tyres? I don't think so. I messed with a tyre diameter. That did help having slightly bigger tyres. And it's not really changed the look too much. I'm content with that. Magnesium wheels too, I forgot to mention. The brakes are now four piston on the front. That's the only change to the brakes I've made. Otherwise, they are the same brakes. And the interior, I've gone with a luxury interior. Luxury infotainment, entertainment, rather, for the era. Hydraulic power steering, as it's always been. I did very, very briefly look at reducing the safety, but it wasn't worth it. it would, Reduced about 20 kilos, 30 kilos. Not enough to really worry me in this car's case. Although it is about 10, 50, 10, 60 kilos, I just can't compromise the safety for that little gain. If it was saving me 100 kilograms, I would definitely do it without really thinking about it. But at that weight, not so much. I've got comfort hydro pneumatic suspension. I did want this. This is a crucial part of it because I've been aiming to make the car comfortable and usable, not just quick. It's not just an uncompromising supercar. It is a sports car at its heart. I should probably put a wing on it or something, but yeah, it looks okay for the time being. Also, 20% profit. If I'm willing to take less profit, I can sell it for less, but there's likely to be a lot of research and development going into it anyway, so could we sell it for less? I don't know. But I'm happy with what I've achieved, I think. The Retro Me Bob and Aero Me Bob are quicker, but those are both supercars, whereas this is a high performance sports car with supercar bits on it in places. Hence why there is a pretty big difference between them in terms of time. And I say pretty big, it's only about three seconds between the Aero Me Bob and this. Not too bad. We do have to keep a distance though, or else why would you buy the more expensive model? But anyway, I think I'm going to leave it here, just briefly show you through the statistics here. Miles per gallon is at just over 20 as well, that did improve slightly with the weight. 20.4 if I remember correctly, which is never bad. Red line 7900, that is high revving considering how large this is for an inline 4. And we make 320.0, 320 exactly, apparently, or the more interesting. And we have fiberglass panels, carbon fiber, unitary chassis, as I've said, five gear manual, and push rod front and rear. So I'm going to leave. Ready?